Good morning, my friends. My name is Lama Jigme Gyatso, the Rational Contemplative. This is the Buddha Joy Meditation School. Welcome to Q&A. Um, one of my fellow vegans wrote me a very flattering email, and, well, I think it's flattering, and she says, and I'll just quote a part of it, um, I don't see a lot of Buddhists who are activists or even very vocal about causes like veganism, human exploitation, or racism. And the answer is, no you don't. Why is this? Statistically speaking, it's been my experience that um, the majority of anybody who's truly enthusiastic about anything is going to be a fundamentalist. So we typically apply fundamentalism to the religious realm or the quasi-spiritual realm. It applies to anything you're interested in. The hard sciences, the soft sciences, the arts, humanities, and yes, that is a species word, but that's what I've got. Um, <laughs> Um, whenever you have someone interested, even in things like fitness or nutrition or exercise, you know, free weight is better, body weight is better. Whenever you have enthusiasts, the majority will be fundamentalist, the minority will be liberal. Fundamentalism is rooted in fear. Fear is pri primarily selfish. The fear of fundamentalism feeds um, perfectionism, rigidity, intolerance, and aggression. And if you have eyes to see, you will observe that leads you further and further and further away from love, away from peace. Now, there are many very clever religious folk, fundamentalist folk, who can find all signs of pious sounding or reasons that their fear is rooted in love, but it's not. If I can borrow from the Christian New Testament for a minute, we see uh, there's a passage in the love chapter, 1 Corinthians 13, that reads, Perfect love drives out fear. That means they, there is a dichotomy between the two. Um, love gives benefit of the doubt. Love trusts all things. Fear suspects all things. So these are completely different energies. I'm rather fond of, um, so of course now I can't remember his name, Richard Dawkins. And in an interview he explained, that on a scale from zero to seven, he could only say he's an atheist with a level six certitude. He felt that there has to be a little room for, what's it called? Uncertainty. And that that uncertainty was the price of, wait for it, intellectual integrity. Now this is a paraphrase, I might not have it said it perfect. But guys, this is important. The greatest men and women of science, of art, of, you know, of love have maintained the intellectual integrity to be flexible, to be willing to question and change their approach, to be able to turn on a dime. In defense of that, Gandhi once explained, and once again, another paraphrase, I only practice the truth as I understand it, which infers that as my understanding shifts, my practice will shift. We have to give ourselves that freedom. So if we're committed to intellectual integrity, if we're truly committed to awareness or mindfulness, which is the art of extracting, of, of performing it, an autocranial ex rectal extraction, which is a very funny way of 
saying, removing one's head from one's own ass. Pull it out, boys. The air is much better up here. <laughs> so we have to be aware of what's going on. We have to practice insight. We have to practice love. Without those things, our life will lack meaning. In the Tao Te Ching, we're taught the three treasures of simplicity, patience, and compassion. Simplicity means flowing with centered spontaneity as opposed to chaotic spontaneity. If you're centered and we're spontaneous, we won't have to think about love. We won't have to think about compassion. They will just flow. Now, here is the deal. Most people value certitude more than they do intellectual integrity. Most people value comfort more than they do vulnerability. Most people value convenience more than they do radical love, radical compassion. But here's the cool thing. There's always going to be statistical outliers or outliers. Perhaps someone will correct me in the comments. We can choose to be a statistical outlier. We can choose not to dwell in the belly of the bell curve and move to the sides of the bell curve and be those people who choose honor and integrity and love over convenience and comfort and security. I hope that helps. Um, it's after the 15th, so I start reminding folks of the next series of meditation classes. All my in-person classes, all my webinars, all my videos are free, 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 thanks to the kind-hearted people who choose to be my patron on Patreon. Um, or my patron on PayPal, whichever curls your toes. But anyway, the next series of both in-person and webinar uh, meditation classes begins the first Friday of October. I suspect it's the second. You are welcome to um, to register using one of the links below. And I'll see you then. May you and yours be healthy and happy. Bye-bye now.